Good morning. I'm Amanda from Rockpile Off Grid Homestead, and today I'm in our shade house. It is veggie garden bed day. So I've got a little bit of prep to do prior to that. Corey's off doing another project. So I need to clear out this space, send it up with like a bit of junk and chairs and tables and tools from the build. Need to clear them out. We're gonna be repurposing some uh, corrugated iron sheets that we already have. Uh, Corey picked up some old ones for free at the tip and they're kind of old style bull nose of veranda sheets. Look what I've just scored. These are the old fashioned bull nose veranda sheets. There's about 20 of them there. And they're the um, real thick gauge tin. That is awesome. And we've been working out ways that we can uh, make them into some pretty cool garden beds and in the spirit of you know do what you can with what you've got uh, we've got some timber that we're going to use internally to help support the structure so it doesn't bow out from the weight of the soil also picked up a, a sleeper timber from the big green shed to help support the ends and I'll tell you how we're using that I'll show you how we're using that uh, when we're pulling them together and yeah i need to like mark out where they're going to go make sure the idea is going to work so yeah i've got a bit of prep to do first before we actually start making the beds bringing the sheet sheets around getting all the like the tools and the materials together doing a bit of a clean up so i'm going to start with that and then we'll jump in and show you how we're making the beds we've got garlic growing in here hey? we've got garlic growing in here i bloody just pulled one up thought it was a weird weed oh really yeah Huh. You can probably replant those. Got one there, another one there. Alright. It's shocking. I just put it in one of those chairs. Green. I'll show you guys the the garlic that we must have missed last year. It's like regrowing already. I didn't recognise it and actually accidentally pulled one up, but there we go. This one there. These are about where we need to put the beds as well, so might end up just digging them up and seeing if we can replant them. That's another one there, so it's just two, and I dig, dug the third one up. See, they've got like roots on them. So if they've already well sprouted and started growing already, must have been a, a bulb that we left in there. All right, that looks pretty good. So the general idea is that along the back here, Corey wants to have a long narrow strip to do his uh, aquaponics so we need space for a tub and he wants to do the pipe style one like what's a pipe pipe style aquaponics things called uh, nft 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 um and then along this strip here we're going to have some long kind of narrowish like quite long like four meters long four meters plus long beds and then from there to the edge there, we're gonna have like a series of smaller beds, like a rectangle or triangle or something like that. If you watched our garden makeover video, this bit of paper will be familiar. This is basically a plan view of our to be veggie patch or the veggie patch, the area allocated for the veggie patch. So this here in the purple is the shade house. This square up this end, will be fully enclosed to hopefully make some sort of microclimate. I've got the quails and tropical. We're kind of thinking this might be a nice area to, um, I say free range quails, but they'll be kind of enclosed in that area and they'll have garden beds and stuff to nest in and scratch through. Alrighty, so in pencil, I've drawn the proposed garden beds. That store shed there has been deleted. That was kind of in the way. This gap down the back here is allocated for Corey's aquaponics. He wants to do an NFT system, so that will be quite narrow. So he's got maybe about a metre and a half there, 1,500. Those shapes there are what we are proposing to make with the tin we've got. Two long beds, just over four metres long, and then five triangle beds. And that's just based on the tin we have. Don't know <laughs> if it's actually going to work out. We've done some mocking up. We think it's going to work. 
uh, but I guess we'll find out together. enough for us to get going on this for my beds I need eight one two three four there's, there's four per bed but we want to put them in level and the land is on a slope so the second bed might actually cut in thanks dozer <laughs> might cut the sheets in half because they're going to be partly buried anyway um, what we're gonna to need to do is to measure these because on the curved ends, and I'll set it up so you can see what we're talking about. I've got to do a joiner of a, like a cut down um, pine sleeper on the end. So I just need to know how high um, I need to cut those two pieces for my first bed. We've got 650. I'll just double check that. That's 660. So we'll just cut out that like 660. So that's the idea for that, uh, the other side fell over. <laughs> now if we just, we did test it out and we try to join kind of both the, we try to join both the curved ends together and they're just not quite on the right angle, they don't flatten out enough to secure together well um, and that would also give us quite a narrow bed. So the solution we came up with is that the end kind of curves we're going to put a um, join them with a sleeper so it gives it that extra width and it also uh, becomes a nice kind of flat point where both the curves can join into instead of trying to attach with each other so it'll end up I think maybe about like 80 800 like 80 centimeters 800 mil wide so now it's time for me to go get the timber and cut that Alright, we're going to lay it on the trestles and I will lay it over here. Plan? Plan. Good plan. So they are about um, 650 to 660, so I might cut it at 660. 660? To a 660. Roger. Um, I think it's going to look good. And that will give us our overall width. Yep. And then we can build the frame for the centre. Do you think that just having that single frame in the centre will be enough? It's going to be enough. Uh, just wondering bowage. if that two metre span, if the soil will bow it out. I don't know. Is there like some sort of formula for that? Uh, yes, um, soil ratio versus 10 thickness plus the uh, <laughs> gravity, phase of the gravitational mood. pull of the earth depending on the tide. Yeah, so just work that out. And, sure. Um, I think we build it first. Yep. And then if it is a bit, uh, you know, going to do that in, in that section, we might just put a stiffener timber or something. Okay. Alright. Good. So all right. Hello and goodbye. I'm going back to secret man cave business. <laughs> Come on, Dave. Alright. Now these are treated sleepers. Um, 
we have to put anything that goes in the ground any wood that goes into the ground has to be treated because we have termites so I've got this I've got this paint here I was going to stain them but uh, we've got some like all weather exterior paint which I think will be a, a better like a better seal a better coverage Alrighty. circular saw speed square safety glasses pencil that's the one I'm looking for Right, so the circular saw won't cut all the way through this at once. So I want 660. Oh, none. The uh, impact driver, and I've got some different screws. Now we need to put these on the end of our tin. So let's clear some workspace so we can like start putting it all together. The, uh, spider webs, gross. Maybe something like that with like a 50 mil overlap. I'm just putting it around here. That's kind of what I'm going for. I think it looks pretty cool. If it works. That looks good. Good. You reckon? Yeah. So this is what I've got so far. And screw it on. Got the centers clamped. I'm gonna build a little frame for that next. Looks good, doesn't it? It's good, doesn't it? Looks good. So we we're just talking about whether or not that center structural frame to bring up bring up the two outside dozer bring out the two upside ones a bit higher so we could put on some mesh and do a trellis might look at that now got drop saw I will get on to making that so I mean these are quite deep beds we're gonna do like Hugo culture in these They'll be nice, a nice height to work into without having to kind of crouch down and stuff. But how high? Maybe I'll just do it at 2-4 because we've got the height in the shade house anyway. Might as well use the height we've got. I think that would be cool. 
That's actually quite interesting. Oh, it's, it's the old stuff, so. By the time we put a bit of mesh up there, that looks alright. <laughs> Heavy? Yeah. Have you told them the plan about the level? Oh, I showed them the plan. Oh, I haven't 100% articulated the plan about the level, but I did mention it. We're going to go back there and see what it looks like. Oh, awesome. That looks great. That looks great. I know it looks skew if, but we're going to put that in level. So Mrs. RP had this great idea. Becky's fault. Yeah, it's Becky from Acre Homestead's fault. She done all her garden beds and they're all in meticulously level and straight with the string line as they tear down the slope that she's got. And she's got 20 beds, I think. So we're going to, on the left, that's going to be the height and we're going to dig the bed in so it's level. And then the next bed will be level with the height of that one as well. So yes, it will be shorter to the ground, but they'll all be level. It's going to look sick because I'm not digging it. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a good shovel for you. Uh, right? Yeah. I reckon get it in position, maybe a hundred mil off, off whack. Yeah. And then just dig along the side, and then dig along the inside. Yep. And then just dig that end, and we'll just move it at 100 mil and drop it in. All right, I'll get right on it. Okay. <laughs> what sort of look are you meant to have? I don't know. Like no, not no smiling. Like deadpan. <laughs> <laughs> so, I hope you enjoyed uh, Amanda's little garden bed build. I probably should let you say that. I hope you enjoyed my little <laughs> garden bed build. 
That was fun. You helped. <laughs> I, I helped. You, yep. you, were, you were an indispensable part of the team. Dozer and I Fetching helped. Fetching and carrying. Yes. Dozer <laughs> is here trying to help again. So we're just going to leave it there yep. for this video. Um, obviously, we need to make. We're going to. Sorry, not obviously, but we are going to make a second one of those. You don't need, need to watch me do that again. Yep. Um, and then dig them in, make them level. Thank that you. is going to look so mint. I will. Um, and then we're going to fill it. So that will be an interesting Combina project as well. Combination of all sorts of techniques. Because we're going to do like kind of lasagna layering um, yeah. towards the, was it the end of last year? We, or was it beginning of this year? I can't remember. Uh, beginning of this year, we got... Uh, our sort of gardening guru friend Robin Todd to come on for a Q and A to talk to us about soil and compost. She's that soil expert lady, isn't she? <laughs> she hates being called an expert, <laughs> um, but she gave us lots of advice about how we can like build up the, the beds, the layers yep. in our in our veggie patch. Yep. So we're going to do kind of a combination of um, like timber on the bottom, like Branch, branches. culture. Yep. We've got some got mushroom a, compost. A cu cubic meter and a half of mushroom. Compost discard yep. and stuff. I'll just get a bit chewy. We've got canola stubble. We're gonna have sheep poo. Uh, we're gonna have, we're gonna source a place, hopefully nearby for soil, cause we haven't created enough of our soil, our own soil yet. Um, and we're just gonna like layer it up. So we've got mountains of this in, uh, from a mushroom making company in wherever they were. Uh, oh, like Willoughby. Willoughby area, in in about in an hour and a half city. drive. In so this, I think it's like a peat moss type thing. Yeah, maybe. And it's full of mycelium and mushroom fungi. Mushroom is fungi. So am I. <laughs> <laughs> so we got a heap of that. Um, I have read online though that can you need to check the pH on it because it can be quite yes. alkaline. So yes, um, we're going to be. Mindful doing that yeah, yeah so and i just found a passion fruit oh did you yeah look ah i thought our passion fruit vine was done so did i found it on the ground that looks nice open it open it oh i'm gonna make a mess good job, good job. oh I'm going to try some. What do you think? Wow. How's that? Okay. Do I need to try it? It's nice and warm. Well, it's been in us in out there. Oh. Wow. Um, Crikey. Huh? Huh. Have we got more on there? There's probably another 40 on there but they're not they're not ripe yet this was just a random one on the ground hmm. i know you can buy canned passion fruit innards in the in the supermarket i wonder if you can can I'll find a recipe i know someone that might know a thing or two about canning rachel from mm. bush edge yep all these people that we dob in bush edge homesteading australia it's because of your community page the homestead community page We've just made contact with so many people that do so many different things. And it's like, mm. you know, like Amanda just said, I wonder if, he, wonder if he can can passion fruit pulp from the passion fruit tree. Yep. Ask the canning oh. lady. Rachel. Drop a post in the group. Yep. Ask and, you and guys. You, yeah. So this is what it's about. Mm. Anyway, I'm going to venture off to the shed and just have a little tinker. Okay. We'll, we'll leave you guys you. there and we'll be back with... The next stage of filling up our Well, I think it's beds. going to be a bit of an ongoing thing, really. Well, we need to get these ones, like, at least one filled Just up these, quite fast because yeah. we've got to get a garlic in. Yes. Yeah. All right. All right. See ya. See you, folks. <laughs> Bye.